So uh, we've raised money from our customers, right? Aizuto is a bootstrapped uh, and a profitable business, right? Uh, we've been extremely capital efficient uh, over the last seven years, right? Which is what has helped us, uh, you know, remain bootstrapped, right? There are no you, you were completely bootstrapped from day one, is that it? Yes. yes oh, that's, that's so that's a wonderful right. story. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the B2B SaaS podcast. I'm your host, Upendra Varma. Today, we have Vivek and Dale Wall with us. Vivek here is the founder of a company called Aizu2. Hey, Vivek, welcome to the show. Hi, Upendra. Thank you so much for having me here. All right, Vivek, let's start with your product, right? Mm-hmm. So I want to understand what your product does like and why customers pay you money. Oh, sure. Yeah. So Aizu2 is a marketing automation platform for publishers that helps them with audience engagement and audience retention. And publishers pay us because Isoto solves a very specific problem for them, which is converting their anonymous readers into a loyal audience and helps them get the loyal audience back on the website, which helps them drive more page views and then more revenue in return, right? This also over time helps them reduce their dependency on the wall gardens like Google and Facebook, right? Uh, and this essentially is what <clears throat> is becoming uh, is uh, over the years this has become a very big problem for the digital media industry right? the massive dependency on Facebook and Google and because publishers are able to reduce that they 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 love using Isuto and they want to pay Isuto for that yes and and what sort of publishers are we talking about are these you know media outlets like what sort of traffic is this and how exactly do do they convert can you just talk about sure. a bit about that yeah absolutely so. So when I say publishers, I'm talking about uh, bloggers, mid-size, uh, you know, mid-size media websites to large enterprise, uh, you know, newsrooms. You know, so I'm talking about likes of Times of India, News 18, Indian Express. Uh, I'm talking about likes of Tencent. I'm talking, uh, <clears throat> I'm talking about uh, small bloggers, like bloggers on WordPress, like uh, okay. people who have, well, you know, two people, three people team. Uh, somebody who's a passionate, you know, tech blogger, reviewing gadgets, mics, headphones, and whatnot, right? So we have all types of publisher using the platform. Uh, fundamentally, anybody who over the oh, who has over time built in built traffic from uh, you know built traffic either via SEO, Google News, or whatever source says, but now wants to retain the traffic is is a one who would be typically using Isoto. Yeah, got it. And let's let's try to understand a bit about these customers, right? So, like, how many customers do you have on your platform approximately? Is it in 50, 100, 1,000? What, what's that number? And I'm, I'm, I know it's going to be a broad spectrum because you've got these, you know, small publishers to these big media outlets. Yeah. Just, just help yeah. us understand how does that look like today? Sure. So, I think we have about close to over, I think now, 15 to 16,000 odd okay. users in the class. Yeah. And when we say customers, we're looking at some thousand plus customers across the globe right now. We have customers in India, Southeast Asia, uh, Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, uh, parts of Middle East, UAE, Saudi, Egypt, Jordan, Europe, the US, and Latin, and so on and so forth. Right? Yeah. Uh, that's the sort of you know spread of our customers geographically uh, and the count of customers as well. Yeah. And then on an average, how much do these pay? Like, and just, you don't have to give me any number. I'm just understanding. Is it a thousand dollar deal? Is it a hundred thousand dollar deal? It's so, it's because we can understand how you're growing and all of that, you know, later. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So uh, ours is a, is a classic uh, mid-market and enterprise motion, right? And we follow a land and expand model uh, in our, uh, uh, in our, uh, in our go-to-market uh, strategy. So most publishers or most, of these brands would typically start low and small. They might start at something like five hundred dollars a month, but over time, uh, they essentially start paying a slot more as they use the platform uh, more and more, and so on. So, yeah, got it. And and in terms of your revenue, right? So can you like are you comfortable revealing that where you are as a company? Is it like a million? Is it a five million, ten million dollar company? Where are you as in terms of revenue? Sure. Uh, I'm happy to sort of, you know, give a, give a directional pointer. Yes, right? yes, that's what I'm looking for, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely, you know, uh, over the five mil mark, right? Uh, we're now in the one to 10 journey. Overall, we've been, uh, uh, we crossed a mil few, yeah, you know, quite, quite some time back. Yeah. Uh, 
that's that's awesome right so and and just help me understand how you're growing right so maybe let's say 12 months before right where were you as a company and how fast has the growth been over the past 12 months right yeah sure uh i used to uh think we've grown consistently in our years after the last five years right uh except uh, the first covid year mm-hmm. which is 2020 right but then for most part uh, we've seen double digit growth uh in throughout our uh throughout our, uh, you know, seven years uh, of operations. Yeah. But the first few years, I think it was, it, it was a triple digit growth. But yeah, you know, uh, last few years, uh, we, uh, we continue to sort of grow uh, double digit. Got it. That's awesome. Right? So now let's move on to, you know, your growth journey here, right? So just, I want you to go back, like, you know, a couple of years back, maybe three, four years back, right? When you started, right? And just talk about that zero to one journey. So, and purely from a customer acquisition perspective, right? Where did you find those first few customers? How did you manage to convert them? Like, what was the journey like? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. For sure. Right. So when we started Izuto, the underlying idea was very simple. Mm-hmm. We wanted to, uh, we saw a problem of engagement and retention being broken on the mobile web, right? And that's where Izuto came into picture and say, okay, we, we will help these brands solve uh, solve their retention problems on the mobile web via, you know, you know, using put notifications, right? And uh, all of us, right, me, my co-founders, which is Neil Kutari, Sachin Grover, and Shrikant, uh, prior to this business, we were, in our previous company, uh, we were working very closely with some of the leading brands across the country, helping them with, uh, uh, with, with user acquisition. And we saw a very clear opportunity that, hey, while they're paying a lot of money to acquire users, nobody's focused on retention of these users, right? So we had a background in the industry. We understood that, uh, we understood precisely who should we be speaking with uh, for a problem statement, which was very ancillary to acquisition, right? So we just hustled our way, I think, for the first dozen odd customers, right? We called up pretty much everybody that we knew. Uh, uh, I mean, we just went through our phone books, called up every single person to say, Hey, is this, is, is, are you guys also struggling with retention like this other brand, mm-hmm. right? Uh, that, and then parallelly, uh, I think we started Izuto in 2016, right? And uh, we had launched our website, I think like in October. Uh, yeah, uh, in, in March or so, we had a website live with up and running and we started investing in content right away. And that used to, that used to generate, you know, quite, Quite a few leads for us, right? Uh, so inbound also kicked up. Uh, well, so apart from our our own hustling efforts, right? Inbound started kicking in within two to three months. I remember our first hire outside engineering and the four founders was actually a content marketer. She right. came in and says, "At very clear mandate, go uh, go build out the blog and the website uh, and help us acquire more leads." Mm-hmm. But but you'd say it's still you know your hustle that 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 must have led to these first five odd customers, right? Something like that. Uh, the, uh, you know, interestingly, the first customer who actually paid, right. Uh, I think we got a, we, we, we got a lot of trials and stuff through our hustle, mm-hmm. right. But the first customer who actually paid to us was somebody in Orisa. Uh, uh, and this guy came in through, uh, through inbound, right. Okay. Uh, and uh, with the content that you've created and that just took yeah, you yeah, like two yeah, to three yeah, months. Yeah. Correct. Right. So this person was searching for, for push notifications for coupon sites. And then we popped up and then like he came and he paid online now and we were like, wow, somebody in, 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 right. Somebody sitting in Odisha is willing to pay. We're like, okay, we have something on our hands, which is actually like, yeah, yeah. worth paying for something. Got it. So we make, let, let's go back. Let's come back right now, right. For the past 12 months, right. So what growth channel has really been working for you in terms of, you know, top of funnel acquisition perspective. So is it still content? Yeah. What else has been working? And can you try to quantify that as well? That would be awesome. Right. So uh, uh, obviously, in the last uh, or the last three years, we have also pivoted. We all sort of uh, like grown beyond just push notifications as a as a marketing channel. We now at a uh, at a multi-channel platform. Uh, there is push notifications, mobile app notifications, there's email. Uh, there are a lot of on-site products and so on. Right. So what has started happening is uh, a lot of our existing customers also now act as new customers for our new products. Mm-hmm. Right. So, uh, and then given the fact that we've been able to build a certain position uh, in the market right now, that has helped us uh, attract a lot of word of mouth mm-hmm. for us, right? 
uh, one good or uh, on, on one uh, uh, one cute little thing just sort of worked amazingly well for us uh, and like sort of continues to work for us as well till date. That's what is uh, uh, is our powered by Isuto uh, yeah. ticker, uh, which comes up uh, whenever a user is asked for a push notification on a website. Mm -hmm. right? So the user sees that this is powered by Isuto, and then the curious ones click on it and say, "Okay, what's happening here? What's what are you guys using?" Right. And they come to the website and discover us and so on, right? So word of mouth and a uh, lot of positive reference uh, have started uh, now uh, you know, drive a lot of business for us. Yeah. Right. So so you mentioned a few things here, right? And now I want to quantify that, right? So let, let me rephrase the question. Let's say you let's say you you've acquired around 200, 300 customers for the past one year, right? So if you were to pick up Pick one channel that's really been working for you, right? So which one would be among yep. these three? Yeah. Word of mouth referrals, powered by branding, and you know maybe somebody from your one of our, one of your similar products. Yeah, honestly, it's a mixed bunch, right? Frankly speaking, you know, sure. That's really why it's a tough question. Yeah. So I just want to understand: is it like, like is there any 30, 40 percent, you know, chunk here that's really been working for you, right? Because I, I know it's all of these things must yeah. be working for you, but like if you were to pick yeah. one and if you want to quantify that, right? So how would that look like? Yeah. Very difficult uh, at, uh, in the journey we are, right? Post 5 million, right? It becomes very, very difficult for you to say, okay, you know what? Only this thing is sort of, you know, contributing 40% to my GTM, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, it, it's also a bit dangerous as well, right? Sure. You need multiple engines to sort of, you know, or multiple cylinders to fire together, right? So uh, there's obviously an outbound motion that we have, which mm -hmm. continues to work really well because we have a strong brand presence. Sure. Because we have a strong brand presence, we continue to drive a lot of word of mouth also, right? Yeah. What I would sort of, you know, if I would, if I had to pick, pick my, you know, uh, you know, put my hand on something, I would say uh, the fact that we've built a robust brand in the, le yeah, in the last six or seven years, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we're now seeing a uh, uh, great upside of that in everything that we do, right? Be it events, virtual, offline, uh, be it our outbound activity, Right, we our webinars, right? Everywhere we see a brand effect now finally coming into picture. Yeah. So so yeah, Vivek. I know I know uh, all of this makes sense, right? And I really I really want to get some numbers here, right? Because that's how it can be actionable for my audience as well. And I know all of these things must be working, right? So if you were to just give me some random numbers, and that's totally okay if you are you know very far from what's on ground, yeah. but that would still help us understand, right? Is it really events or is it webinars? Is it outbound that's been working for you? What's really happening yeah. to your company at this stage, right? That's something that I'm trying to understand. Just give me random so, numbers, something that's close that will totally work for me because that is still much better than, you know, nothing. Okay. No, I get it. I get it. Sure. So uh, I think uh, I bought, it'd be close to about 40% uh, for our new sales, right? I think that, yeah, we, you know, actually it's more like, you know, 60, 60, 40, 60% outbound, 40% inbound, right? Got it. But then inbound uh, content continues to be the better off. Which sort of which which drives a lot of seats. We're not super heavy on PPC overall, right? PPC would be less than fifteen percent uh, in the overall uh, lead mix, right? You know, rest of everything is pretty much content and SEO. So yeah, got it. Yeah, that that that's that makes a lot of sense, right? So and let's talk about your bottom bottom of funnel, right? So once some lead discovers you somewhere through any of n number of channels that you mentioned, right? What happens? How does your sales cycle look like? How do your you know SDRs or AEs convert them to a paying customer? What happens and how does that look like today? Sure. Yeah. So uh, again, depending upon what channel we are looking at, right? Uh, an enterprise sales would take anywhere between three to twelve months, times even longer as well, depending upon who you are chasing and how you are chasing, right? Uh, inbound again, uh, depending upon what what type of uh, organization is coming into the door, right? Uh, you know, small lean teams, you know, class typical SMB uh, kind of leads uh, would convert. Anywhere between, let's say, a few days to top two weeks, right? Mm -hmm. Largest organizations, big market would would have a would have a POC process. They would have a trial for a few days as well, for a week or two, and then would sort of you know negotiate the contract. Let's say a week or two, so maybe a month or so, right? So yeah, big market would be you know four to four to five, four to six weeks. SMB definitely under two weeks, right? And an enterprise, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it's yeah, more definitely more than a month, uh, you know, quarter plus longer sales cycles. Yeah. Got it. And then like how do you manage all like is, is your product a self serve one or you still need somebody hand holding during those initial days? We do both actually. Right. Mm -hmm. 
we have a dedicated onboarding and solutions team. Uh, that's on standby, which typically comes into picture when there's an enterprise that we're looking at, uh, uh, where there are specific use cases to be sold via push notifications for all the communication, right? Otherwise, uh, you know, there are, uh, there are providers like you and me, which yeah. is when a good their WordPress console, install the plugin and activate it and just set it up yourself and then, you know, keep on using it, uh, you know, without ever having to talk to somebody at ISO. Yeah. So uh, both kind of things ex exist right now. Yeah. Got it. And then how big is your team as of today? So we're about 70 odd people right now. Got it. Yeah. Got it. And then talk about your funding status, right? So I, I'm assuming you must have raised something externally to, to grow the company, right? And like, who did you raise it from? And like, just talk about that process. Sure. So uh, we've raised money from our customers, right? Izuto is a bootstrapped uh, and a profitable business, right? Uh, we've been extremely capital efficient uh, over the last seven years, right? Which is what has helped us, uh, you know, remain bootstrapped, right? There are no you, you were completely bootstrapped from day one, is that it? Yes. Yes, oh, that's that's a are. that's a wonderful right. story, and, yeah. And 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 what's the plan going forward? Do you intend to raise anything, or do you intend to build a nice, sustainable company going forward? What's the vision here? The uh, well, the idea so, is to solve for specific, you know, uh, specific obstacles or, or specific challenges, right? Uh, we don't see capital as a challenge as of now, right? We do see quote market as a challenge right now. But we don't see capital as a challenge uh, for that, not for our GT motion, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, and again, right, yeah. uh, depending upon how aggressive we are, we'll figure it out. But yeah, for now, for now, no, no, no plans of raising capital in the immediate future, right? And always, always open to looking, uh, always open to looking at partners who could help us, you know, crack specific markets and so on. Got it. So Vivek, I see you, you've been a part of a leading acceleration in India. It's called Upeka, right? So like, how did you sort of, how did they help you in your journey so far in getting where you are as a village? Can you just talk about that? Because a lot of SaaS founders are looking for mentors and all of that stuff, right? So can you just explain how your journey has been with them? How can they help you out? You know, maybe just talk about your own experience. Sure. So we started our journey with Upeka in 2017. That was a time when we had completed one year as an organization, mm -hmm. right? And we just, and, and that was also the time when Opeka was just getting started. So we, in fact, are Opeka's first batch. Uh, also, we're the first ones to sort of go through the process with the Opeka founder, Prasanna, Rajan, and Shekhar, right? And uh, our journey with, uh, with the Opeka team has been a fantastic one and continues to go on right now as well. Right? When we had joined Opeka, I think we were around 20,000-ish uh, MRR uh, overall. And then we obviously they've, they've grown now uh, multiple uh, multiple times over since then, right? But uh, more importantly, I think the Opeka team uh, and the Opeka community, it's a fantastic sounding board for founders to brainstorm, uh, to look for ideas. Uh, and, you know, more importantly, and, and I think most importantly, founder coaching, right? Mm -hmm. We were, uh, we, we were, we are first time B2B SaaS founders. Yeah. Right? We had experience of building or selling software products before this, right? And the Opeka team uh, helped us immensely in that process, right? They gave us tools, they gave us frameworks, they, they gave us network who helped us, uh, you know, figure this out. So yeah, you know, that's what as a journey with Opeka has been a fantastic one. And we continue to be active part of the community as well. So, so is it primarily founder coaching that really helped you during those initial days and, and, and as well as the community these days, like what just happens? Right? Because I'm assuming when you started, they must, you just mentioned, right? So they've got like 10, 15 odd founders there, right? So I'm assuming yeah. that there could have been direct one-on-one -on -one conversations with you, you know, helping you out and all of that. But now that I've yeah. seen, they've got like hundreds of startups, right? If, if a startup were to sort of consider joining a Upeka program today, right? What can they expect out of it? How can they actually benefit from your perspective, obviously? I think the journey is uh, is very similar. They they, they continue uh, to extend themselves or to or to, or to make them available in a, in a one on one fashion. Right? Uh, I think the Opeka team does offers us pretty much uh, yeah, you know every every week right now. Uh, they're equally available. Uh, the community you know obviously has grown exponentially and is so much more helpful. The Opeka group on my WhatsApp WhatsApp group. Uh, 
that just doesn't stop buzzing. It buzzes every single day. And how big is this community today? I think we're looking at over 200 founders right now. Okay. Yeah, that that's wonderful, yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah, super strong, super super. You know, people who are extremely candid, extremely you know, uh, extremely extremely helpful. Yeah. Got it. All right, Vic. So one last question, right? So where do you see yourself in five years, right? Where do you want to take this company to, right? So is it growing to let's say five hundred employees? Is it going to let's say fifty million ARR? What's the vision? Or do you want to sell your company off at some point of time? Are you aiming for an yeah. IPO? What's the vision here, right? Overarching vision. Well, uh, the way we see it is we exist in a market which is massively underserved and also inefficiently underserved, right? We believe the opportunity in this in this category of uh, uh, of digital media, digital publishers, is a massive one, right? Uh, and, uh, and an opportunity which is not looked at, looked by other players in the market space. So we definitely want to continue serving this segment. Definitely want to uh, you know uh, <clears throat> we definitely want to, want to build out more and more products which will help them uh, you know become more and more resilient to their business models, right? So that's on uh, what we, so there are very no changes in what we're doing, right? I'm mm-hmm. sure. Will we, we, we would we have been listed at a, at a, at a, on a public exchange, uh, partners, right? Uh, I think uh, for now, we're just very, very focused on getting uh, the next milestone, which is the $10 million. So yeah. Yeah. Charlie. Yeah. All right, Vivek, thanks for taking the time to talk to me. Hope you scale ISO to do much, much greater heights. Thank you so much for this time. Thank you so much. For having me. Thanks for watching the B2B SaaS podcast channel. I believe that the best way of building SaaS companies is by regularly talking to real founders who are out there building their companies. These founders have gained tons of insights during their journey and I'm here to bring those to you. So if you want more such stuff, please make sure to subscribe to the channel here.